Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm fine. Okay, well, let's. Does anybody have any questions before we get started today? Um, I do. Uh, this is Lori. Uh, Hi, Lori. I just noticed with practicing the uh, alphabet uh -huh. that that um there's a couple of words uh there's just a couple like like doll one of the um one of the one-way connectors uh -huh. um i noticed that when i was doing the sounds for it with the um audio from the book that was uh -huh. the link that i went into that it sounded like doll and i just heard some different pronunciations is that I mean, does it matter which way we learn them? Is the fa or the doll? Yeah, well, they're two different. You have a, a dal, dal, da, and then you have um, the next one is thal, thal. We'll go over those. Yeah. We'll go over yeah. those. In my book, in my book though, it's D H A L A A L. So the key to Arabic, my uh -huh. book says D H A A L. So that's where the confusion came in. Okay. Yeah, um, you kind of have to just listen to the way they're pronounced. Sometimes the 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 spelling, the English spelling, isn't quite correct. And sometimes, yeah. like on some recording, sometimes, like if it's not me, like sometimes if you'll get, for instance, a recording made by somebody like that's an Egyptian or something, they can actually um, pronounce things a little bit differently. So try and listen to the way I pronounce them, um, just in case. Okay. Okay. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, Lori, how do we say I am from America? Okay, oh goodness. I had a hard time keeping up with this and doing the other stuff. <laughs> it's a lot, um, I know. <laughs> uh, I know that America is America, so let Good. me. Uh, uh -huh. From, from, I'm gonna have to look at my notes. Hold okay, on. okay. Unfortunately. That's okay. Um, Anamin Amrika. Very good. Anamin Amrika. Lara, where do you live? Um, oh, Ana Tuscun or Ana Tuscun. Good. Ana Tuscun or Ana Tuscunina. Very good. Lori, you're welcome. Lori? No, no, no. It's the other one. Um, Oh, Sorry. Um, How do we say you're welcome? Sorry, I've been practicing the alphabet all day. <laughs> I just get on you the last couple of days. I can't. <laughs> Af, Afwan. 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 Very good. Afwan. It's a Afwan. lot to contain in your mind. I'm telling you. I'm taking chemistry and algebra too. So oh, no. it's hard to get it all. <laughs> That's why we we review it every week, so that way um, it'll it'll get in there, it'll stick in there, and then well, and then you'll have to learn it all in Arabic script. So then you have something well, else to think I've about. I really, I've really enjoyed the videos, the games. They really have helped me with a lot of um, the alphabets. So I feel really good about that, at least. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm glad. <laughs> okay, Lara, how do we say "end upon you, peace"? Um, wa alaikum as -salam. Very good. Lori, I speak Arabic. Ana atakalam aloha al Arabia. Good. Ana atakalam aloha al Arabia. Lara, goodbye. Um, ma salam. Very good. Lori, masa no. Oh, that's, we won't do that one. <laughs> Okay, God yeah, willing. I, say, I don't know that one. <laughs> <laughs> Insha'Allah. Good, Insha'Allah. Very good. Okay, Lara, welcome. Asun uh, wasachun. Mm-hmm. Lori, peace be upon you. Assalamu alaikum. I am so messed up. My husband was in uh, the Middle East for oh. years with the military, and he knows some of these phrases, but he says them in the dialect of where he was. Oh, where was and he? So it's, um, I, I think he was, I mean, honestly, I, he was in several different places, but oh. I know he was by the, uh, 
by the pyramids. Where else was he? Um, of course, he just left, so I can't ask oh, him. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, he, we'll was, this he was a marine, so oh, oh he was a goodness. marine, so he was wow. over there. Yeah. So um okay, assalamu alaikum. Very good. Assalamu alaikum. Excellent. Okay, um, Lara, good afternoon or good evening. Misa al khair. Misa al khair, very good. Um, Lori, where are you from? Where are you from? Uh, Min, Min Aina Inti. Very good, Min Aina Inti. Lara, welcome back to you, reply. Uh, Ahampika or Ahampiki. Very good. Mm -hmm. Lori, how are you? Oh, goodness. Um, Kefa Haloka or Kefa Haloki. Mm -hmm. Good. Lara, please. Um, oh, uh, min fadlika or min fadliki. Very good. Lori, thank you. Shukran. Mm -hmm. Lara, hello, hello. Marhabtain. Very good. Lori, oh, keep getting those. I'm pleased to meet you. Oh, I just practiced this one last night. Nice to meet you. And of course, I can't remember it. Uh, Tesha Rufna. Tesha Rufna, very good. Lara, do you speak English? Hal tatakelam aloha al inglesia, or hal tatakelamina aloha al inglesia. Very good. Lori, good morning. Sabah al khair. Very good. Excellent. Lara, what's your name? Uh, ma ismuka or ma ismuki. Very good. Lori, until our next meeting. Ela alaki. Ela alaka. Ela alaka. Ela alaka. Ela alaka. Good. Ela alaka. Ela alaka. Lara, I don't understand. Uh, Anna la afham. Good, Anna la afham. Lori, yes. Naam. Mm -hmm. Very good. Lara, no. La. Uh huh. Lori, good night. Tishba al khair. Tishba ala. Tispa ala khair. Tispa ala khair. Very good. Tispa ala Lara, fine. Praise to God. Uh, Be khair, alhamdulillah. Mm -hmm. Very good. My name is Lori. Is me Lori. Or, sorry, the other one. Um, mm -hmm. Ma ismuka or. No, you're right. Oh, my name. You say my name. Okay, is I was right in the first. You were right. right. Yeah. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> Lara, how old are you? Uh, Kam Omruka or Kam Omruki. Very good. And one more. Hello, Lori. Marhaba. Marhaba, excellent. Okay, we're going to go to our dialogue. Start with dialogue number one. Um, Lara, you'll be student A, and Lori, you're going to be student B. Oops. Okay, Lara, your student A, Lori, student B. All right. Ahlan was Ahlan. Ahlan Biki. Kefa Haluki. Beher Ahamdola wa Inti. Ana Beher Shukran. Ma Ismuki? Ismi Lori. Wa Ma Ismuki Inti? Ismi Lira Tasharafna. Tasharafna Biki. Ela Ala. I don't know why I can't get that one. Ila alaka. Ila alaka. Ila alaka. Ila alaka. Masalama. Very good. Okay, switch. Switch parts. Ahlan was Ahlan. Aham piki. Hefa halaki. Bihir alhamdulillah. Wa anti? Ana bihir. Shukran. Mi ismuki? Ma ismuki. Ma ismuki. Ma ismuki. 
Ismilera, Wama Ismuki Enti. Ismi Lori Tesharafna. Tesharafna Biki, Ila Alaka. Vasala. Very good. Okay, we'll go on to conversation two. Um, Lara, you'll be student A, and Lori, you're student B. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Kefa haluki. Mumtaz alhamdulillah. Mumtaza. Here you're going to say Mumtaza because you're talking about yourself. Mumtaza. Okay. Mumtaza. I'm sorry, I lost. Yeah, it sounds like you cut cut out or I you cut, cut out. out for a moment. Yeah. Mumtaza. So Mumtaza email then? Um, Mumtaza okay. is for a female. And you're talking Mumtaza. about yourself, so you're Mumtaza. Okay. Mumtaza al alhamdulillah wa kafa haliki inti. Kwesa alhamdulillah. Mi ismuki? Ma ismuki. Ma ismuki. Ma ismuki. Ismi lero, wa ma ismuki enti. Ismi lori tasharafna. Tasharafna biki, ila alaka. Ma salama. Very good. Now switch roles. Lori, you start. Assalamu. Oh my goodness, I just lost it. Assalamu alaikum. 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 Wa alaikum assalam. Hey fahaliki. Mumtaza, alhamdulillah. Wa kefa haluki enti. Kweza alhamdulillah. Ma ismuki? Ismi lori wa wa ma ismiki enti? Ismi lori tasharafna. Tasharafna biki. Ela alaka. Ma salama. Very good. Any questions about what those dialogues mean? No, I've been working on those this week. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. Okay, now we're going to get to um, the alphabet. We're going to review what we did last week. Prayer time, so it's always the web's a little slow. Or they usually cut me off, so I'm, I'm grateful that I'm still on. <laughs> okay, let's see here. Okay, we'll begin just by looking at the chart. I'm going to say the letters and I want you to um, repeat them after me. You can say them both at the same time, okay? Aleph. Okay. Nope, I can't hear you guys. Aleph. Okay, let's Aleph. try again. Aleph. Can you hear me? I'm sorry, you're cutting in. I. Yeah. Now I can hear you. You can, I can hear me now? Okay. Works. Okay. Okay. Aleph. Yes. Yeah. Just repeat after me. Aleph. Aleph. Ba. 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 Ta. Ta. Ha. Sa. Sa. Jim. Jim. Ha. 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 Uh, Dale. Dale. Zal. Now. Ra. 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 Zay. Zay. Seen. Seen. Sheen. Sheen. Sod. Sod. Dod. Dawn. Ta. Ta. Za. 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 Ein. Ein. Rein. Rein. 
สาสาสาคอสคอสแคสแคสแลมแลมมิมมิมนูนนูนฮะฮะว้าวว้าวเยอะเยอะโอเค let's try it again from the beginning Alice Alice ba ba ta ta sa sa Jim Jim ha 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 Dell Dell Zell Zell Ra 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 Zay Zay Seen Seen Sheen Sheen Sod Sod Dod Dod Ta Ta Va Va Ein Ein Rein Rein Fa Fa Kof Kof Kef Kef Lam Lam Meme Meme Noon Noon Ha Ha Wow 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 Yeah 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 Okay, let's try it once more. I'm going to say it. Just repeat after me. Aleph. Aleph. Ba. 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 Ta. 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 Sa. 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 Jim. Jim. Ha. 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 Del. 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 Dal, ra, ra, zay, zay, sin, sin, sheen, sheen, sod, sod, god, god, ta, ta, va, va, ein. Ein, rein, 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 fa, fa, kof, kof, kaf, kaf, lam, 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 mim, 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 noon, 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 ha, 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 wow, wow, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Good. This time, Lara, I want you to go through the entire alphabet by yourself. Start with Aleph. Okay. <laughs> Aleph, Ba, Ta, Fa, Jim, Ha, Ha, Dal, Val, Ra, Ze, Sin, Shin, Sod, Dod, Ta, Tha, Ain, Chain, Fa, Kaf, Kaf, Lam, Mim, Noon, Ha, Wow, Yeah. Very good. Okay, Lori, same thing. Aleph, Ba, Ta, Fa, Jim, Ha, Ka, Dal, Thal. Ra, Ta, Sin, Sheen, Sod, Dal. I'm sorry. Dod. I lost my place. Sheen, Sod, Dod. Uh huh. 
a ta hold on I'm, okay your okay. cursor is messing me up i'm gonna look okay. at my book <laughs> okay this one is tall tall and tall. Raw. 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 yeah it's i'm marking it out in my book because it says za in my book and so that's, yeah that's the egyptian pronunciation yeah it's not za it's big raw raw okay the ein mm -hmm. rein good a off mm -hmm. half mm -hmm. lam mean noon ah wow yeah Good. Yay. Uh huh. Good. Good. Um, Lara, what are the six one-way connectors? Uh, the six one-way connectors are Aleph, mm -hmm. uh, Dao, Thou, Ra, Ze, and Wow. Very good. Aleph, Dal, Thou, Ra, Ze, and Wow. And Lori, what are the three long vowels? Um names of them and they're, they're hard to remember um, <laughs> Ata, kesra and dama those are the short vowels okay oh, Atta, sorry. Kesra, and dama are the short vowels what are the long vowels the ones that are actually written as part of the word oh uh, hold on i've been practicing the short vowels now of course you need the long vowels <laughs> I don't think I have them wrote down. I don't have them written down. Them? Okay, um, Lara, what are the three long vowels? The long vowels are Aleph, Wow, and Yeah. Very good. Okay, so Lori, your first long vowel is Aleph, and Aleph makes okay. the Ah sound, and then Wow, which makes the Oo sound, or the O sound, and Yeah, which makes the E sound, and it can also make the A sound, depending on what precedes it, okay? So, A, U, E, Aleph, Wow, and Ya. So you wanna jot those down so you have those. Yeah, I actually found them in my notes after <laughs> I couldn't find them. <laughs> I, have, I think I have, I gotta organize my notes a little better. <laughs> okay. Okay, so what we're doing this week is I'm um, going into week four, and you have a test um, next by next Saturday. I think you could probably have till next Sunday too if you need a little bit more time. But um, but you do have a test that will be comprehensive from week one all the way through week four. So just be aware of that. But um, today our lesson is on connecting letters. Remember we said that each letter of the Arabic alphabet can have up to four different shapes. It doesn't have to have four shapes. Um, the one-way connectors actually have two shapes only, but the majority of the letters in the Arabic alphabet will have four different shapes depending on where they're found in the word, okay? If they're found at the beginning of the word, if they're found in the middle of the word, if it's found at the end of the word, or if it's found in um in isolation the letters that we've learned so far or the are the letters that are in isolation okay so let's see here It's not the one I wanted. <laughs> okay, here. Okay, I did tell you on the, the email to um, go ahead and print out some worksheets. Did you get a chance to do that? Yeah, I have them all printed out. You have um, them? I didn't. 
I didn't get them to work print out. Do I need to do it right now? Um, that's okay. Um, if just if you don't have them, just go ahead and get um a, some blank pieces of paper, okay? Because we're going to be okay. doing some writing. Okay, we'll start with um the lessons. This is the lesson that I wanted. Okay, Lara, I want you to um, read through the alphabet that you see here, all the way through. Just start here and just read all the way through. Lara? Oh, uh, sorry, I couldn't hear that's, you. Yeah, that's okay. Um, Aleph, Ba, Ta, Ba, Jim, Ha, Ha, Dal, Val, Ra, Ze, uh, Sim, Shim, Sod, Dod, Ta, Da, Ain, Hain, Fa, Kaf, a uh, Kaf, Lam, Mim, Noon. They're a little mixed up uh, here. What's this one? Can you scroll down a bit more? I can't see it. Uh -huh. Oh, that's a. Isn't that wow? Uh huh. And then ha. Uh huh. And then I don't know that one. I know okay. it's like a. It gives a glottal yeah. stop. It's called Hamza. 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 And the last one is? Yeah. Yeah, very good. Lori, are you back with us? Yes. Okay, Lori, go through the, the letters. I'm sorry, you cut out a little bit. You want okay. me to read the letters? Read the letters, yeah. Okay. Aleph, Ba, Ta, Ta, Jim, Ha, Ha, Dal, Dal, Ra, Zay, Seen, Seen, Sod, Sod, Ta, or Ta, Ta, good. Va, uh huh. Ein, Rein, Fa, Kaf, Ka, Lam, Mim, Noon. Wow. Mm -hmm. Oh. Hamza. Hamza. Uh huh. Hamza. And yeah. Very good. Okay, now we're going to mix them up. Okay, Lara. Do the first line for me. Uh, okay. Um, ha, mm -hmm. ba, uh -huh. ha, a, uh, ta, lamb. Very good. Lori, the second line. Jean, seen, mm -hmm. dal, mm -hmm. ain, mm -hmm. ra. Very good. Lara, next line. Uh, they, clean, sheen, yeah, dog. Very good, Lori. Wow. Ta. Noon. Mm -hmm. Mean. Ta. Very good. Lara, the next line. 
a cough fell down Aleph door. Very good. And Lori? Dodd. Not Dodd. Uh, this one doesn't have a point. Yeah, I said sod. Oh, sod. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're cutting out. I'm sorry. <laughs> ba. Mm -hmm. ba. Is it Hamza or Hamza? Hamza. 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 And ha. Ha. Very good. Excellent. Okay. Now we're going to look at each of the letters in their um, different forms. Okay, you'll notice that um, the shapes of the letters in Arabic, um, you'll have groups of letters that are very similar to each other. Like for instance, we have ba, ta, and tha. They all are made with this rounded shape, but the only difference between these three letters are the placement and number of points. Okay, do you see that? They look exactly alike other than those, the, the different points. So ba has one point down, ta has two points up, tha has three points up in a triangular pattern. Ba, ta, and tha, but it's all the same shape of a letter. In fact, in pre-Islamic times, they actually wrote Arabic without the dots. So people wouldn't know the difference between the ba, ta, and tha because they looked exactly alike. But because they were native speakers and um, very educated in Arabic, they were able to know what was being said without those dots. But when, um, when Islam started to move into other areas that weren't native Arabic countries, then you had a lot of people that wanted to learn how to read Arabic but they, because they weren't Arabic speakers, um, they were unable to read because it didn't have the dots and it didn't have the, the vowels that we put in now um, that came later. So as those, those areas started to be occupied and people started wanting to learn how to read Arabic to be able to read the Quran, um, they needed to do something for the foreigners. So what they did so that the foreigners could read the Quran and the other holy texts was to add dots, okay? So that's why we have dots and vowels today, to help um, foreigners read Arabic. So they're, they're very useful. Okay, so you'll notice, and I want you to, I told you to print out those worksheets or else if you don't have the worksheets, just practice writing each of these letters as you see for the letter ba. So the first no. column is ba in isolation. So that's the way we learn the letter, okay? That's on your regular flashcards. That's how it looks in isolation when it's just by itself. You have the full letter. But at the beginning of the letter of a word, you lose a whole bunch of this letter. You just started about a quarter of the way up the line, go down to the line, and then it connects to what follows it. And then you put one point down. Now, typically when you're writing a word, what you'll do is you'll write the entire skeleton of the word first, and then you'll go back and put your dots. So you don't write a letter and put a dot, write another letter, put another dot. Um, it's kind of, that would be kind of, it would take a long time. So typically once you start to write a word, You'll write the entire word all the way to the end, and then you go back and put your dots. Just like in English, if you write a word and you go back and you need to dot your I's and cross your T's. You typically don't do it as you're writing. Same thing in Arabic, okay? So the first column then is the letter in isolation. The second column is at the beginning of a word, the way it starts. The middle column, this one, the third column is when the word, the letter is in the middle of a word. Okay, so here we have a little uptick in the middle and then it connects to whatever follows it. So it's connected to what precedes it and what follows it. And you put one point down. Okay, that's ba in the middle of a word. 
And then when it gets to the end of the word, it connects to what precedes it, but then you get that whole shape back again. You see that? The whole shape. But this time, it's connected to what precedes it. Okay, right here, it's connecting to what precedes it. So we have the final form in this column. So we have the, the isolated column, the beginning of the word, the middle of the word, and the end of the word, the end of the word, okay? Now, your first three letters, as I mentioned, look exactly alike. So I want you to practice writing all four forms on your piece of paper, okay? Just write all four forms. The, the isolated form, the beginning form, the middle form, and the final form. And do that for ba, ta, and tha. Do that right now and let me know when you're done. I'm done. Okay. I'm done. Oh, okay. Are you for each of them or all all five that are on the screen or just? Um, just the first three. The first three. Ba, ta, and tha. First three. Okay. You finished bad tat and that? Uh, yeah, I'm ready to move on. Okay. Okay, the next three letters also look exactly alike. The next three letters that you have are gene, ha, and ha. They're exactly, oh my connection's unstable again. They're exactly alike except for the number and placement of dots. So the letter Jean has one point in the middle of the letter, okay, in its, in its isolated form. The letter Ha is a heavy letter. You hear a lot of air coming out when you hear the sound Ha. There is no point on it, no point. And the letter Ha has one point above the letter. So you have Jean, Ha, and ha. The first column is their isolated forms, just the way we learned them last week. Okay. Now look how they change if they are in the beginning of the word, in the middle of the word, and at the end of the word. <coughs> You'll notice that we've got this one, it starts about a quarter of the way up the line, goes over, and then straight on the line and then you put the, the point below it. In the middle of a word, it's going to connect to what precedes it, and then you have that same shape you have at the beginning of the word, and put your one point down. At the end of the word, it connects to what precedes it, and then you get that entire shape again, just like you had in the isolated form. So write jim, ha, and ha in all of their forms. And let me know when you're done. Jim, ha, ha. I'm done. Okay. Okay, I'm done. Okay. Sorry, getting up the middle of the word ones are pretty hard. <laughs> It'll be easier when we um when we actually write actual words. And typically they they stack letters like this when it's handwriting, which we won't get into today, but um, they write like one letter on top of another. It's kind of confusing, so we won't we won't look at that for right now. Okay, next we have. Let's start with just dal and thal. Remember, dal and thal are one way connectors, so they only have two forms. They have the isolated forms, 
and then they have the form when it connects to something that precedes it. Okay, so um, but anything that follows the letter DAL or THAL, you have to leave a space. So because it's a one-way connector, it only has two actual shapes. Okay, so I want you to write DAL and THAL. DAL and THAL at the beginning of the word, I'm sorry, in isolation, at the beginning of the word, which is the same, and then in the middle of a word, and at the end of a word, right? both Dal and Dal, and let me know when you're done. Okay, I'm done. All done? Yeah, I'm done too. Okay. Okay, after Dal and Dal, we have Ra and Zay. Ra and Zay are also one-way connectors, so they only have two basic forms. They have the isolated form and the beginning form are the same, and then the middle and the end are also the same. So write Ra and Zay and let me know when you're done. Done. Okay. Okay, next we have the letters seen and sheen. They look exactly alike except for the number and placement of points. The seen and sheen, they look exactly alike, but seen doesn't have any dots. Sheen has three dots in a triangular pattern. Now most people when they're actually writing the letter sheen don't normally write it with the three dots. They'll actually write like a little tent. Okay, like a, a little triangle but without the bottom in it. So just the two sides of the triangle. But you can also do it with the three dots either way that, that you'd like. Okay, but we have seen and sheen in isolation. At the beginning of the word, you notice it loses that long tail that it has here. You don't have that when it's at the beginning of a word. In the middle of the word, it connects on one side and also on the other side. So you just get like all of these little waves. You get three little waves. And then at the end of the word, it connects to what precedes it. You get a loop and another loop, and then that long tail comes back again. So practice writing seen and sheen in all of its forms, and let me know when you're done. It was a little harder to do. <laughs> you have, you have to watch all those little, those little scoops. Yeah, yeah, it is. And then trying to write it right to left is also, it, getting used to all of it's hard. <laughs> it takes time, that's for sure. This is seen and sheen. Okay, I'm, I'm done. Okay. I'm ready to move on. Okay. Okay, our next two are sawed and dawed. We have sawed in its isolated position. At the beginning of a word, it gets much smaller. It loses that long tail again. In the middle of a word, it connects to what precedes it, and it connects to what follows it. And then at the end, it connects to what precedes it, but it gets that long tail back. Try to write sawed 
and dawed. Sawed and dawed, and let me know when you're done. Remember that your line is here. Okay, so the tail here goes below the line and then it comes back over the line. This one stays right on the line. So does this one. And this one again goes below the line. So your line goes right through here. Okay. Okay. On the last one on mm -hmm. Dodd, mm -hmm. um, how do you, I mean, how do you flow with that constantly just because okay. that? You're going to be coming off of your letter here. You go straight back like this. Then you're going to go up at an angle, make a little loop, and then down to make your tail. So you'll come off from here, go back this way, up, and then your tail. Yeah, I'll try and write that on a, like if I can figure out how to watch me writing it. <laughs> I wanted to like bring my iPad up here, but I'm not sure if I can, if I can do that. Yeah, it's hard to get it to go that way without stopping to. Yeah, I um. But, in the okay. past, I think I got it. Okay, I'll I'll try and and write it on a film so you can watch me write it. Um, unfortunately, like when I used to use um, YouTube, they used to have a program that let me switch around really quickly. But this one doesn't let me do it quite as quickly, so. Not going to be able to do it, but I'll, I'll, I'll try and get a film up so you can watch it. Okay, so the next two are ta and va. Ta and va. Now these are tall letters, so they sit on the line. The bottom of the letter goes on the line. Okay, they don't go below the line, and the the tail goes up about three quarters of the way up the line. So it's a tall letter. Most of the letters just go up about a quarter of the way, but this one goes up like three quarters of the way. So make the letters ta and va. They look exactly alike, except that va has a point, one point. And they really don't change all that much. Remember, this is your isolated form. This is at the beginning of a word, it connects here. This is in the middle of a word, and then at the end of the word. Now, typically what's done when like, you have somebody actually writing a word, when it's in the middle of a word, you'll start here, you'll do a loop, and then you'll write your next letter, and then when you're all done, you go back and you write that stem. So the, the straight line, you, um, go back and write that just like you're like crossing a T or dotting an I. It would be done after the word is written. <clears throat> okay. But um, you can also like stop. If you stop to write write the stem when you're writing the, the bottom part of the ta um, and the, you will slow yourself down a little bit. It's not a, it's not a huge deal, but um, just, just so you know, most people like native speakers when they're writing, if they're writing fast, they, they put the, the stem of the ta and the in later, okay? So did you So you can't write it like a, you can't write it like the cursive B, writing it backwards because you can't have the loop. It's gotta be a straight line down. Um, you, you can, like, like if you wanna start it like at the beginning of a word and you write it like this, that's fine. Instead of writing it, just like like just the loop part and then you write the rest of the word then you go back and put your stem um it's just a the way that like like in elementary school and in arabic classrooms they'll teach you to 
write it without the stem and then you go back and you put your stem. Personally, as long as it looks like a ta and a tha, it doesn't matter to me which way you write it, but. <laughs> okay. okay. So did you both write to know. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Our next two are ein and rein. Ein and rein. And they look exactly alike again, except for um, rein has a dot. I don't know if you can hear me. Okay, so ein and rein. Rein has one dot over the letter. Now this one changes a lot um, depending on its different forms. So you have ein in isolation and rein in isolation. At the beginning of a word, your line would be right here. So this starts again about a quarter of the way up the line and then on the line, okay? A quarter of the way up, make this little guy that looks sort of like a hems up. And then your line would be right here. Now in the middle of a word, you're going to connect it to what precedes it. You go up and then straight over. So it's going to have a flat top and then it comes back down. It comes back down. The letter ein or rein in the middle of a word. At the end Do of a word. you fill it in? You don't have to fill it in. Yeah, I don't know why they okay. filled it in. Yeah. So you just go up okay. off the line, straight across, and then down and cross over. And then it connects okay. to what follows it. Okay. At the end, it's going to connect to what precedes it. You make that same shape again. It goes up, straight over, down, and then underneath the line. So connects, goes up, straight over. So it's got a flat top. And then it comes down and underneath the line. And having the flat top will help you to recognize it as an ein or a rein. Because when we get to a fa and a calf, or cough, sorry, um, you have a rounded top. And I'll show you that when we get there. But here, by making it a flat top, it will signify to you that that is an ein or a rein. Okay? Let me know when you're done. Okay. Okay. Oh, I'm done. Okay. Okay, so next is fa and cough. Fa and cough. You'll notice here in the middle column what I said. Here, you'll notice that these are rounded. See how they're rounded? Just like a loop. Okay, so that's why you want to do that instead of the flat top on ein and rein, so that you know that fa and cough are the letters that you're writing. So write fa okay. and cough. So fa in isolation, at the beginning of a word, in the middle of a word, and at the end of the word. Same thing with cough. They look exactly alike and they, they make the same changes. Again, here you have your tail. This would be, uh, not your tail, sorry. Your line will be right here. Same thing here. And the tail on fa and cough um, goes below the line and then comes back up. So you don't want your tail hanging down there. You want to bring it back up to the line, maybe just a little bit over. But when it's at the oh, beginning of a word or the middle of a word, then it's sitting on the line. So your line actually would be no. like right under the letter. Lori? And fa and is fa under the line or on the line? What is fa? Because I yeah I know be, that um, it would be under the line, the the long okay. the long tail. Um, but not in the in the okay. middle and at the beginning of the word. There it sits on the line. Okay. Okay. and cough. I'm done. Okay. 
I'm slower on this one, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. 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 I had thought okay. that Bob was under the line originally. Or over the line, I mean. Yeah, it goes under the line. Okay. Okay, our next one is calf. And calf is one of the tall letters. Okay, so it's going to go up about three quarters of the way up the line. Start up here, go down, and then you put this little guy that looks like a Hamza in the middle of it. Okay, but it, this part at the bottom sits on the line. So all of this is above the line and it goes up about three quarters of the way up the line. Okay. In the beginning of a word, it's going to start up here, go down and around, and then it's on the line. This part is on the line when it connects. In the middle of a word, it's going to connect to what precedes it. You go up and down, write the rest of the word, and then go back and put this part. Okay, so you're writing, you go up off the line back down on that same line, continue writing your letters after that, and then go back and put this, this line here, okay? Again, as I said, if, if you want to take your pencil off the paper and write it as a calf like you see it here, that's fine too, okay? It'll just slow you down a little bit. So like if you wanna write a little bit faster, if you write, the entire part of the letter except this extra line here, you can write it a little bit faster. You just go back and put that on after you've written the entire word. At the end of the word, it changes again. This is the line right under here. So this actually, all of this goes above the line. There's nothing below the line there at the end of a calf, okay? You just make, you connect it to what precedes it, go up, about three quarters of the way up the line, down on that same line and around on the line, and then it comes a little bit up off the line, and then you put in that Hamza looking person thing. Okay, so that's how it changes. So write the letter calf. It changes a lot, it looks very different depending on where it's found in the word. I have to leave after these two. Um... I have a house full of people. Oh Sorry. my goodness. Okay. <laughs> well, feel I have a ladies group at yeah, I have a ladies group at 1030 on every other Saturday. Sorry. Okay. okay. So this is your your week. Okay. Okay. Our next one is lamb. Yeah. Lamb starts above the line. And at the beginning of a word, it's gonna stay on the line. Just by itself, um, your line would be like here. It goes below the line. Um, here, it starts above the line, so it's going to go up about three quarters of the way up the line. It's a tall letter, and the curved part goes on the line. It goes on the line. Now, remember, lamb is um, a connector. It's not a one-way connector, so it's going to, in the middle of a word, it connects to what precedes it, goes up three quarters of the way, and then back on the line. And this is how you can tell the difference between an aleph and a lamb. Um, I always have students that get confused. How can you tell that you've got an aleph and not a lamb? Here, remember that aleph, there will always be a space. It will never connect to what follows it. But lamb does. So lamb looks like this, oh. okay? At the end of the word, it's going to connect to what precedes it, goes up about, about three quarters of the way up the line and then goes below the line and comes back over the line at the end. So your line would be right about here. This goes below the line and then comes back up to the line or a little bit above. Okay, Next. I'm gonna- You're gonna go? So you'll okay. <laughs> okay. Right, well, gotta, so you'll be- You'll record the rest of this, right? Yeah. So Okay, um, I'll come back in and watch the okay. rest of it today. Okay, I'll see you next week. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. 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 Okay, Lara. So then we have the letter meme. Meme is a small letter. 
this part sits on the line and the tail goes below the line. So you've got a lot of the letter below the line. Your line would be right here, the letter mean. Mm -hmm. And then you'll notice it gets really small when you start it at the beginning of a word and it can get really, really tiny. The books that we use for next semester, it makes the meme really, really tiny. So you'll see that in printing a lot of times. In the middle of the word, typically I will um, color in my meme so I know it's a meme. Okay. And then at the end of the word, you have the, the, the head of the meme and then the, the long tail. The tail goes below the line. So in this case, your line is here and that tail goes below it. Okay. So write the letter meme for me. All right, I'm good. Okay. Next, we have the letter noon. And noon is just pretty much like bad tat and sa. Um, in its isolated form, it's a little bit curvier, a little bit rounder, I guess, mm -hmm. squished together than, than bad tat and sa. So write the letter noon. At the beginning of the word or in the middle of the word, it looks exactly like bad tat and sa. It looks a little bit different. Um, in its isolated form and in its final form. Make the letter noon. All right, I'm done. Okay. Okay, next we have the letter wow. And wow, remember, is a one way connector, so it really only has those two shapes. So make the letter wow in its isolated form or at the beginning of the word. Remember, it can't connect. If you connect it, um, it will look like a fa or a cough, but it'll look like you forgot the points. So wow is always, um, there's always a space after it. And then when it connects, it connects to what precedes it, but again, you have to leave a space. Make the letter wow. And the tail goes under the line, yeah? The tail goes under the line, yes. So your line is right here. The tail goes underneath. All right, I'm ready. Okay. Next, we have the letter ha. Now, ha has several different forms. Actually, the ha that they show here isn't actually mm -hmm. the correct form. It should just be like a like a, a circle or like a teardrop, okay? Yeah. Okay, so that's the isolated form. This one is not. This is how hat looks at the beginning of a word. So it has that, that loop and then a double loop through it. Then this tail goes up on the line and it connects to what follows it. So it starts here, go down, make a double loop, and then connect it. So that double loop is in the beginning form, not in the isolated form. The isolated form is just a teardrop. In the middle of a word, it connects to what precedes it. Then you go up and you make a butterfly wing. You go down and you make another butterfly wing, and then it connects the letter hat in the middle of a word. So it connects, make a butterfly wing on top, a butterfly wing on the bottom, and then connect to what follows it. At the end of the word, it connects to what precedes it, goes up off the line, and it makes this little rounded part, okay? And that's how it looks at the end of a word. So make the letter half for me in all of its forms. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, I'm going to skip Hamza at the moment. I'm just going to go on to ya. Yeah. Okay, so ya yeah in its isolated form with two points down. Whoops, sorry. Ya yeah in its isolated form has this really pretty curvy shape. 
Um, the line goes like right through the middle of the letter. So this part is about a quarter of the way up the line. Then your line is here. And this curvy part goes below the line and then back up. Mm -hmm. If it's at the beginning of the word, it sits on the line. This part is about a quarter of the way up and then the bottom is, is on the line. Same thing with the middle of a word. At the end, it's going to connect to what precedes it, goes underneath the line and back up again. It's a really pretty letter, very curvy letter. Okay, make the letter ya. Yeah. Okay, I'm done. All done? Okay. See, I wanted to show one more thing. Um, a few different letters that we haven't gone over yet. So how many letters are there in the alphabet? Uh, 28. 28. Okay, there are a few that don't have full letter status. I'm going to show you what they are. Okay, first we have Ta Marbuta. Ta Marbuta. It looks like the letter Ta, like the letter Ha. This is the way the letter Ha is in its isolated form, but it has two dots over it. Okay, so it's a teardrop with two dots over it, and it's called Ta Marbuta. It's actually the letter Ta. It's found only at the end of a word, okay? So you never see it anywhere else in a word except at the end of the word. And what it does is it tells you, in general, that um, that word that you've written is of the female gender. So all words in Arabic, all nouns are either masculine or feminine. There's no it in Arabic. So one of the major ways to say that a word is feminine is if it ends with a ta marbuta. Okay? Does it make a sound? Is it just there? What? Does it make a sound or does it just um, indicate that it's feminine? It makes a sound and it depends on if the word is voweled or not voweled. For instance, um, if you want to say the word for car, it's sayara, sayara. Okay, so when you're pronouncing it unvoweled, you hear an ah sound for tamarbuta. But if you vowel it correctly, which we'll learn more about next semester, um, you'll pronounce it sayaraton. Sayaraton. So this letter, actually, when you put anything above it or underneath it, or if you're adding it on to the end of a word, is actually the letter ta. So it makes the ta sound. But it can also make the ah sound if, if it's not um, if it's not voweled. And we'll we'll get more practice on that when we actually start writing actual words themselves, okay? So, um, okay. but remember that it's called Ta Marbuta. So it's actually the letter Ta. So anytime you add something, any voweling above or over it, or add something to the end of the word, you're going to hear that Ta sound. And actually, then it will actually turn into a Ta. Okay, so that's the first one. The next one is Aleph Maksura. Aleph Maksura. And Aleph Maksura is actually the letter Aleph. Okay, it looks like a ya without dots. And just to confuse you, sometimes you'll pick up um, a book and they use this letter as a ya. Egyptians do that all the time. They, for some reason, don't know the difference between a ya and an Aleph Maksura. But this is Aleph Maksura without dots. So it's the same curvy shape, but without dots. And it's the ah sound. And you can't use it at will. Um, it, it depends on the spelling of a word. It's usually found in like older words. They'll actually be spelled with 
and Aleph Maxora. This letter is, again, only found at the end of a word, so it won't be found anyplace else. It will only be found at the end of a word, but it's called Aleph Maxora. Okay, Aleph Maxora. It's only found at the end of the word. It has only two shapes, and it's actually the letter Aleph. The letter Aleph. Next, we have Hamza. And Hamza can be um, in several different places. And what it is, is a glottal stop. It's like, ah. And it can be written above an aleph or under an aleph. It can be written over a wow. It can be written on a seat. Um, there are lots of different places. And we won't go into a lot of that today. Um, but just know that this shape, this, this one is called Hamza. Hamza. Okay. Okay. Okay, I guess we'll stop it there. Do you have any questions about anything that we've done today? Uh, I don't think so. It's no? A, it's all a lot, but I think it's just a bunch of memorization and a lot that I'll have to get used to. Yeah, it takes time, and, and you just have to be patient with yourself. I recommend studying a little bit every single day um, instead of trying to sit down and do like all of the assignments for the week in one day, it's better to do, you know, like a half hour every single day or an hour every single day and just keep working on it. Um, work on the phrases, work on the, the dialogues, work on the alphabet. At this point, the alphabet's really important. You really want to spend a lot of time um, mastering the alphabet in the next several weeks. And we'll, we'll be working with them constantly because in the next several weeks, you'll be learning how to put letters together to form words. So it's really, really important. And then we'll go back and learn all of the phrases and things that we've learned already in Arabic script. And from then on, we'll only deal with Arabic script. So it's really important to just really take your time, watch all the videos over and over again. Like most of the time, just don't do it just once. For most people, it's not enough. You want to just um, watch them over and over again until you really feel comfortable with them. Okay? Okay. Okay, Lyra. Well, have a great week, and I will see you next Saturday, inshallah. Masalama. Masalama.